In this video, we're going to focus on headlands and bays, a coastal landform. So first, if we consider what exam questions we could be asked in our GCSE examinations, we could be asked step by step how this feature is formed. So the formation of headlands or bays or both. We could be asked to annotate or label a photograph that they provide for us or OS map skill based questions where we have to deal with maybe compass directions or grid references. So if we get started by thinking about what is a headland, so a headland is a cliff that sticks out into the sea and it is surrounded by water on three sides. They are generally made of hard rock or resistant rock and therefore are not easily eroded. On the other hand, a bay is a crescent-shaped indentation in the coastline, typically found between two headlands. This particular area of the coastline will be less resistant rock and is therefore more easily eroded by a processes of erosion. So if we begin by thinking about the formation of a headland and bay, we start off with a discordant coastline. This is a coastline where we have alternating bands of less resistant and more resistant rock. So hard rock and soft rock at right angles to the coastline. Step two in the formation of a headland and bay then consists of the waves approaching our discordant coastline of alternating bands of more resistant and less resistant rock. This leads to erosion taking place over time and what you will begin to notice is that the less resistant rock is more easily eroded than the more resistant rock. Step three in the formation of a headland and bay is then when we start to see that the less resistant rock is retreating further back inland because it is more susceptible to the force of the waves and erosion occurring more often. This is where we start to see our bays being created in our less resistant rock and our headlands in our more resistant rock. Step four in the formation of a headland and bay then involves areas of more resistant rock strutting out or sticking out into the sea as headlands and the less resistant rock areas being set back inland creating bays. Therefore, for step five, within those bays, we have deposition occurring when those waves enter that sheltered area because they've traveled a further distance into the bay. They will deposit material like sand, shingle, potentially some clay and begin to eventually form a beach. And this is the formation of a headland and bay. A UK example of a headland and bay is on the south coast of England, the UK, known as Swanage Bay. This is a bay that is surrounded by two headlands, as you can see on the map now. And then if we take that example of Swanage Bay and look at an OS map for this particular region of the UK, we can see on the screen that I am sectioning off those areas of more resistant and less resistant rock onto the OS map. This potentially could be uh, some type of skill or question you might want to practice whereby you take a map and you actually annotate or label the features that you see that link your geographical knowledge to what you are looking at.